I thought I was doomed. But a miraculous thing happened, General. I could breathe. It must have been the helmet that was jammed onto my head. It was a strange and remarkable thing. Some might almost say beyond belief. A narrow-minded fool may indeed, General. But of course, you are no Durak. But even as I sank towards the floor of that lost ocean, my journey was about to take me to darker, stranger territory than ever before. And it happened like this. Let me see if I have this correctly. After narrowly failing to apprehend the mad missing explorer Tull and recapture my atomic bomb in your giant snowball, you fell through thin ice and sank to the bottom of a subterranean ocean, discovering along the way that the mind control helmet you had accidentally wedged onto your head enabled you to breathe underwater and resume your pursuit across the seabed. General, you seem perplexed. Perplexed? Perplexed is that the keys to my house are not where I left them. Perplexed is the fact my dog will not eat cheese like other dogs know Ivan Ivanovich. I am not perplexed. That is unfortunate, General. Once again, Comrade Pervalov, I must correct you. Unfortunate is losing one's car in a snowstorm. Unfortunate is booking opera tickets on your wife's birthday and getting the date wrong. Was she furious? That is not the issue! Furious? However, now that is a good word. I could speak with your wife. Would that help? I could always have a word with her if you like. I could always have you shot. Oh, you could? But I suspect she would appreciate the gesture less. A vast monster of the sea. A giant, humongous, many-armed electrical destroyer of ships and cities. Electrical? Electricity flowed along its horrible body, sparking and stunning all it touched, flowing like deadly rivers along its awful tentacles. 
A sobering discovery. Are you suggesting that the vessel simply wandered off course and sank here? That seems unlikely even by your standards. No, General, I only wish that were true. The mighty ship showed terrible scars. Signs of having been grappled and torn asunder by some huge and terrible adversary. It is indeed strange and curious. I am troubled by this discovery. Might you almost be perplexed, perhaps? Don't push your luck. I was stationed at Sydney Ostrif some years ago. I am only too aware of how easy it is for the imagination to create monsters when one is exposed to lonely and dark places. My men required constant monitoring. Much like my cousin Pavel. He was also stationed at Ostrif? No, he required constant monitoring. He was a devil for stealing eggs. I was referring to the fear that something is lurking in the darkness. Something strange, brutish, and ill-intentioned. Again, that sounds much like my cousin Pavel.
There was no doubt about it, and escape was all I could think about. Naturally. That and duty. Duty? Yes, General. After all, I had a bomb to recover from that villain toll. How clever of you to remember that. But first, there was the issue of escape. Escape from a dreadful, grasping creature that consumed all it could reach, dragging anything that wandered within its clutches to a miserable doom. A hoarder of useless trophies and stolen goods. Mm, once again, Tavarish, I suspect you are pursuing a somewhat tortuous metaphor for capitalism, in the misguided hope of appealing to my political ideals.
mouse, General. A little mouse being toyed with by a terrible cat. A rather wet mouse. I was like a little underwater mouse. Be being stalked by a giant rubbery electrical cat with eight tentacles. Exactly, General. Good, I'm glad we cleared that up. You may continue. Submarines. You didn't mention submarines before. Didn't I? Uh, why? No, 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 General. Of course, submarines. Millions of them. Uh, well, uh, several, at least. Hmm. Any particular submarines, did you? See names? Numbers? General, have you lost a submarine? I am not at liberty to answer that question, as you well know. Well, General, losing one's car in a snowstorm is unfortunate, as you say. But to lose a whole submarine, that could be considered careless. And you are certain it was M. de Vesci Pidgeot Schwist? Well, that was painted on the hull, so I can only assume so. Ah, I think I know where this dismal story is going next. You somehow miraculously brought the remaining closed cycle engine online, uh, flooded the torpedo tubes, dispatched the Kraken with one shot, and triumphantly surfaced. No, General. That is not what happened at all. I did indeed make my way to the torpedo tubes, but for a very different purpose. After all, history has taught us that atomic power is not to be toyed with. Much like tired, impatient generals, perhaps. Particularly the perplexed ones. Indeed, General. Or like dogs that will eat no cheese.
will our determined yet disorientated hero end his days as socialist sushi? Will his daring exploits be cut tragically short by vengeful calamari? Will the general's wife ever forgive him for missing Ruslan and Ludmilla? And just how many eggs did Pavel steal, and where did he keep them? All of these questions and more may or may not be answered in the next exciting episode of Little Obvious!